Hey everyone, it's Data Science Jay here, and today we're gonna look at how to become a data scientist. This video comes at the heels of analyzing 15,000 data science profiles on LinkedIn of data scientists at top tech companies and fan companies, and basically figuring out exactly what they did to become a data scientist, what their education background is, what their skills are, and what previous experience that they actually did to then become a data scientist today. If you don't know a little bit about me, my name is Jay. I run a company called Interview Query. But before that, for about five or six years, I was a data scientist working in Silicon Valley for a couple of different startups before I quit to start my own company. So personally, I felt a little bit out of the loop when first deciding to do this video because it's been a while since I've actually gone through the data science interview loop and also tried to become a data scientist. My background is pretty non-traditional. I've gone over it before, so you can watch the video in the link below. But essentially, I got a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from UW and then eventually kind of pivoted a lot of my coursework while still doing that electrical engineering degree towards data science. And so eventually I got a marketing analytics job in Silicon Valley right after I graduated, which then pivoted into a data science job at a startup, then grew into a real uh, data science career. But to me, that path is a little bit non-traditional now, but I really wanted to dig into the data to see if that was actually true. Because I heard that a lot of people actually get master's degrees to prepare themselves for data science jobs. So what I did was I analyzed 15,000 LinkedIn profiles of the top data scientists that worked at companies like Facebook, Google, Amazon, on Lyft and basically looked at their profile data to see exactly what their experiences were. What we saw was that about 90% of data scientists actually had a bachelor degree. This is pretty obvious. But out of the 90%, about two thirds of them, of all data scientists now, had a master's degree as well. And then on top of that, about one fourth of all data scientists that are currently working in the field today also had a PhD. So basically one third of all data scientists just didn't get a master's degree or higher. And so that does kind of make the path a little non-traditional, but it's still a pretty high percentage. Beforehand, it had to be that you had to get like a master's degree or a PhD to become a data scientist. Now in the past few years, that's not actually true. But what about the fields of study? I studied electrical engineering, but when we looked at the data, we saw that computer science and math were actually the most popular majors. And if I had to recommend one degree to actually study, if you want to become a data scientist now, it's definitely just to do computer science. Computer science gives you a wide range of skill sets that you can apply not across to just data science, but also to software engineering if you decide to go down that route as well. I know recently that the new majors now are opening up data science majors and data science programs to undergraduates. I highly recommend going down that path, but keep in mind that computer science does give you that flexibility towards learning programming languages that can allow you to become a stronger data scientist, but also a machine learning engineer or just a straight up software engineer if you decide to pivot later down the line. Other good majors and fields to go into are around applied mathematics and statistics. Applied mathematics is a lot better than mathematics in my opinion because of the fact that it's more practical and it's not just baked into academia theory. One of the biggest problems from transitioning from college or master's program into industry is the fact that it's really difficult to wrap around how you can actually apply data science in a business sense. And so doing a little bit more of economics, kind of applied mathematics degrees might help you a little bit there towards understanding exactly what's required. Additionally, I think getting a master's or PhD is fine. But at the end of the day, data science is becoming a very business focused field. While you'll know the ins and out of rain of forest and neural networks from doing your master's and PhD programs, you won't actually understand how to ship a model on a deadline until you actually get into experience. Next up, what skills do you need to actually be a data scientist? This is a topic that I've covered a lot and I think the main thing that I could take away from this in a quick summary is that SQL and programming languages are the most important things that you need to master. SQL and data manipulation languages like pandas are necessary for data scientists to just be able to manipulate data, process it, analyze it, and basically do anything with the data. While programming languages and Python, Java are all helpful, but mainly Python I think is the key skill to learn for you to actually do some data analysis with a project and also ship models with it and build models into production as well. It really depends on which kind of path that you're trying to take. There's mainly two paths right now. There's the product analytics kind of data science analytics track, and then there's the more data science machine learning engineer track. And so for the data science analytics track, 
you're gonna be focusing a lot more on business cases, product intuition, probably statistics and A-B testing and experimentation, and also munging data with SQL. While on the machine learning engineering track, you're gonna be doing a lot more coding. The interviews will be a lot more elite code heavy, and you're gonna be expected to do a lot of shipping of models and productionizing of data intensive systems. And so generally, I'd say it kind of depends on what kind of track you wanna to take towards what skills are really gonna be required for data scientists. All right, the next thing that I wanted to analyze to understand how to become a data scientist was understanding what experience you actually need before you get that data science job. I've always recommended people to get internships, but I wanted to know exactly how many internships you needed and what percentage of data scientists actually had a data science internship before they actually got the job. So the data actually showed that about 25% of all the data scientists had an internship before they got the data science job. And this is actually a smaller number than I thought, but personally, I think data science internships are probably the best thing that you can use towards getting that data science job anyway. Internships are a huge resume booster and they also show really good social proof that you know how to work in an industry setting. I rank internships over grades, courses, clubs, and any kind of courses and certifications, mainly because they're the hardest thing you can actually get. There's not that many data science internships out there, and so if you can land one yourself, you've got social proof that you can go through an interview process and function accordingly in the industry. The other most common thing I saw in profiles for data scientists was that basically 50% of the candidates before they actually became data scientists had a job in a different kind of field that was related to data science. So specifically, this was software engineering, financial analysts maybe, and even data analytics. The most common title that we saw was a, being a data analyst or a software engineer before you transition into a data scientist. I stress here that probably one of the best stepping stones that you could do is actually become a data analyst before you become a data scientist. Becoming a data analyst preps you for a lot of the same responsibilities as a data scientist does, except for the fact that it's a lot easier to do entry-level tasks of a data science job. For example, when someone asks you to analyze a data set or produce a dashboard, those are all tasks that data scientists have to do anyway, but these are a lot easier and they're usually directed to data analysts anyway. This is also the route that I personally took, so I have a bias here, but I was a marketing analytics hire first at a Silicon Valley startup, and there I actually really cemented my SQL skills and got better at SQL to the point where I could actually pass the interviews once I actually interviewed for data science roles. So it's a great way to just land a stepping stone role. You can be there for a year or two years and then just switch jobs and try to get into a data science role. Now that we've talked about what kind of experience most data scientists have before they get that job, let's talk about how you can actually get that first data science job and what you really need to do to get there. So the first part of getting any kind of data science job is just to get your resume through the door and get an interview lined up. And then the second part becomes just acing that interview and getting the offer. When we looked at the data, on average, most data scientists took 6.5 years before they landed that first data science job. Now this is a little skewed because we looked at the data between the first data science job and the first job they ever had. So we normalized it by college even. And so basically we took only the dates after they graduated from college. Uh, it was still five years on average. And so in general, data science is still pretty high kind of pedigree sort of title. I'm sure in recent years, it's probably skewed to be a lot shorter, but in general, it does take a lot of work to get that data science job title. When you're trying to break into the field, here's a couple things that might help. One is to start writing blog posts and marketing off your skill set. So I've talked about this relentlessly, but honestly, Honestly, the most important thing you can do is almost always writing about your data science experiences and basically talking through exactly how you're thinking of data science. This is what I did that actually helped me land 10 plus offers when I was a senior in college because I wrote something that went viral on Hacker News and I got a lot of inbound from employers that were looking to hire me because I was a young kind of new graduate and they could probably also pay me a little bit less. But because I wrote about my experience with data science, I wrote about a project about housing in Seattle and how I analyzed the data, they understood that I had one, an interest in data science, and then two, I could communicate my thoughts well, which are both really important skill sets for data scientists. And even if you don't get any attention from your blog posts, it's all about practicing the writing skill and getting to the point where you will gain attention or just be a great communicator in a data science role. And so writing about data science has never hurt. It's always gonna help. And if you, even if you're bad at it, you'll get better. Next up, the next thing that follows that's pretty obvious is doing projects. So doing data science projects is how you can actually start writing about data science anyway. But additionally, you should probably do a wide variety of data science projects before you get that first data science job. One thing that really helps is if you do data science projects within a domain where there's a lot of startups that are hiring data scientists. So for example, if you're doing a lot of data science work on real estate or housing like I did, then you're kind of setting yourself up 
for marketing yourself towards these data science startups and data science companies like Zillow and Redfin and other companies that basically are hiring a lot of data scientists in the real estate field. It also helps out with giving you real world experience. And lastly, I just did a video about how you could build a data science project to actually generate income. And so if you wanna check that out here, doing a data science project that can generate income is also a great way to showcase that you have a business sense towards the projects that you're building. And they're not just kind of Kaggle data sets where you're analyzing them for just the fun of it. Lastly, once you actually get that interview from the recruiters, once you do all the marketing, the writing, the applying to jobs and going through that outbound process, the next thing you gotta do is just ace the interview. So this segues really well into the sponsor of today's video and the sponsor for every video of mine, which is Interview Query, the company that I built after I quit my job. It's the interview prep tool that I wish I had when I was interviewing as a data scientist. I started Interview Query as a side hustle and has now morphed into the best interview prep tool for data scientists. We have hundreds of interview questions from all the big tech companies and use data science to create interview guides that give you a step-by-step -step process to towards acing the interview. We also have courses in specific topics like machine learning, SQL, and product metrics, and an interactive code editor for you to practice your problems. We just added some new features like our new data science job board and salary guides for you to be able to see exactly how much you should make for different roles and across different locations. So go check it out. One last thing I wanted to add before uh, the video ends, to not give up hope on your data science interviewing journey. I think it's a long slog. Most of the job search is really tough. And hopefully you can take some of these guys and some of these data points to understand exactly how you should become a data scientist in the future. Lastly, if you stick to the end of this video, we're running a contest as well on this YouTube video. So if you comment below on your kind of experience on looking for a data science job, becoming a data scientist, what you previously did to become a data scientist, please add it below and then we'll enroll you in a contest towards getting a free year of interview query premium. Add your comment below and thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and I hope I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.